Barcelona versus Juventus was supposed to be the big thing this week after a rather forgettable El Clasico for Barca. But thanks to Bartomeu resigning, something that was a long time coming, this major match between European giants was the B story this week. Yet, if Barca are to actually contend in Europe this season, these are the kind of tests that matter, and since there was no fans in Turin, a result felt like a necessity. Komen chose not to start Fati, and that makes sense to me. You can't have a 17-year-old, 18 in a few days, starting every single match, especially two in a row of this caliber. The puzzling thing is that Pedri started, and he's younger than Fati. Dembele also got the start, which I think we all agree was rather risky against a defensively sound and hardworking team like Juventus, that wants to switch play and use the width of the field with their five in the middle. It was nice to see Dembele on the right and Pedri on the left though, where they are both more comfortable. It was also a shame to not see Des rewarded for his El Clasico performance, but I also understand Coman not wanting to bench Sergio Roberto and give Des the rest. Starting lineup be darned though, what a start by Barca. Messi shot, Pjanic shot, Griezmann hitting the post, all in the first two minutes. There were a few missed passes early from Bjarnik, but before we talk about the goal, I want to bring up how the former Juve midfielder was so essential to Barca's win today. With Juve, you either concede the wings or provide space in the middle, and the double pivot of De Jong and Pjanic won the middle of the park today, entrusting the wingers to help the fullbacks cover that space. Pjanic isn't fast, but he is a step or two quicker than Busquets, which allowed he and De Jong to keep their shape. For most of the match, they remained within 15 yards of one another on an even plane, never pressuring Juve too much, but timing their step-ins and forcing the ball out wide, where Barca would look to turn over the opponent. When Barca went to press, Pjanic was the one of the two who came forward, and his anticipation in winning the ball back was good all game long. It'll go underappreciated, but a nice showing from him. So as I said, I was worried about Juve switching play and causing trouble, but it was Barca that switched the play and made something happen. Messi dropped back into midfield, switched to Dembele, and even though two came to him, Chiesa got turned around and a good deflection put Barca up 1-0. Barca started this game with confidence as the better team, and they were lucky to always be in that position. Not only was Alvaro Morata offsides for two goals in the first half, but we saw misses from Messi after a nice build-up with Griezmann, an album miss after a terrific build-up from the entire squad, and Chesney coming up big against Dembele and Griezmann. While I praise Pjanic and De Jong for the defensive shift in the first half, Araujo and Lingle were superb, particularly Araujo, who Morata tried to attack. Lingle's positioning, meanwhile, behind Pjanic and De Jong meant that Dybala barely got a sniff of this match. Unfortunately, Araujo was injured at the end of the first half, and so De Jong was moved back to center back and Busquets partnered Pjanic. But fortunately for Barca, this was a perfectly paced match for Busquets, who was able to sit back and allow the other five in front of him to do their thing, as Juve was allowing tons of space themselves, and more on that space in a second. It was almost 1-1 when De Jong should have cleared it better, and Morata came off the back of Lingley this time, but again, no luck for the journeyman Morata. Being 1-0 most of the game and Barca missing chances, it always felt like the narrative of this match could change, and I think the player that best embodied that today was Pedri. Okay, it could have been Griezmann because his movement was spot on in this competition, but obviously no goal, so he would have still been criticized if the scoreline was different. Griezmann and Messi without Coutinho or Luis Suarez is actually something we haven't seen too often, and it was nice to see how well it worked today. But back to Pedri, I feel like there is a dissonance between what we want to see from Pedri and what he's being asked to do. I said before that when Griezmann plays the right wing and Fati on the left, it has to be on purpose to feed so much of the attack through the one side. In this game, it felt the same, except the plan was to feed Dembele on the right and have Pedri occupied with helping Alba with the defensive duties on the left. That game plan was working, and the persistence and discipline paid off in the second half when Pedri was given a lot more space and started expressing himself better. The spin away in the middle of the field and the feint on the sideline were great to see for his confidence. Like Fatih, he is prone to one too many passes or not releasing soon enough, but I continue to be impressed with him. It's not Pedri or Puj. We gotta stop that. It could be Pedri and Puj if Komen was creative and knew how to use everybody or even wanted to use Puj. Even though it was still 1-0 in the last 10 minutes, the red card was one strike against Juve and the intensity of Messi late was strikes two and three to steal the game. Why did Busquets have so much space to sit back in? Why did Pedri get more space on the left? How did Fati get so many open chances in the box? And we're going to forget about that late one. It's all because Messi was up to it all game long. Yes, he had his misses, but you could tell that he had fire in his belly and fire in his feet. And that means that Juve had to bring multiple defenders to him every time he touched the ball. That gravitational pull of Messi is what allowed Fati to get goal side of Bernadeschi, who committed the silly foul in the box. Then Messi got his reward for a well-played day at the office, beating Chesney on the penalty. 
It was never pretty, and people will say Barca should have done better to finish their chances. But this is a team that showed something today. Not just X's and O's, which Komen got right against Juve, but this was a hungry team, and that's good to see. Were they galvanized by the resigning of the board they don't like? Maybe a little, but I think the pride of losing a Clasico weighed on them more. Now it's six points and top of the group in Champions League, so time to right the ship in the Liga, with Deportivo Alaves up next. Make sure to check out our second podcast this week discussing the Bartomeu resignation, and make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications for more content like this. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca!